so we've seen several rules that I've called the basic or elementary rules for calculating probability events. Uh, unfortunately, real world problems, chemistry problems, and other real world problems are, are never as simple as uh, calculating probabilities for simple things like uh, dice or cards. So uh, we need to know how to combine those rules uh, to calculate probabilities for more complicated events or composite events that are not the simple case of just mutually exclusive or independent events or uh, complementary events. So as an example, uh, we'll stick with the example that involves uh, dice rather than uh, molecules to keep it relatively easy to think about. Um, but the, the problem itself is going to be sl sl somewhat more complicated. So let's say we roll five dice. And the question is going to be, what's the probability? So we count up when we roll the dice, we count up how many times we roll a six out of those five rolls of the dice. Uh, and we're going to ask, what's the probability that I get at least one uh, six out of those five rolls of the dice? So this n. Uh, that I'm asking for to be greater than 1 uh, is the number of rolls of 6 in my 5 rolls of the dice. So there's uh, several ways to think about that problem. I've rolled the dice 5 times. Uh, so uh, if I want at least one uh, 6 to show up, it could show up once, it could show up twice, 3, 4, 5, uh, up to a total of 5 times. So I, I could think about this problem as saying, uh, What's the probability that I rolled exactly one six, or I rolled a six twice, or I rolled a six three times, or four times, or five times? Right? So far, so good. I've broken the problem down. I've broken this composite problem down into uh, a statement of a bunch of ors. So we recognize that as a mutually exclusive um, situation. Either I rolled it exactly one six or two sixes, three, four, five. Each of those possibilities excludes all the others. Uh, so I could just add, calculate this probability and add it to this one, add it to this one, and add it to these two. When if, and, and we'd certainly get the right answer if we did that. That's a valid approach to the problem. But um, each of those itself is a composite problem. Asking what's the probability that I rolled exactly three sixes out of five rolls of the dice is going to ask. Uh, force me to rephrase the problem, uh, break it down further, and say, uh, did I roll the fives on the first and second and third roll, or maybe the first and third and fifth roll? So it's going to uh, itself be a composite problem. The problem is a little bit easier if I think about the other probability ru rules, and I ask, if I roll at least one roll of six, what's the composite? What's the other possibility? The only other possibility is I didn't roll any. Uh, Sixes. So either I rolled one or more sixes, or I didn't roll any sixes. Those are the only two possibilities. So those two options are uh, complementary. So the probability of rolling any sixes is 1 minus the probability of rolling no sixes at all. So this one, it turns out, is uh, significantly easier to calculate. So th the probability of rolling no sixes at all Let's think about what that means. It, I rolled the dice five times. Uh, I rolled one die five times. I rolled five dice altogether. But in order to roll no sixes, I needed to get something that's not a six on die number one. And I needed to get something that's not a six on die number two. Each of the dice has to be something that's not a six. So notice that's an and problem. That's uh, something that's not a six on die number one. and something that's not a 6 on die number 2. So that's clearly an and problem. I need something to happen for die number 1 and die number 2 and die number 3. Those are independent events. What happens on die number 1 is independent from what happens on die number 2, and so on. So I just need to calculate the product of these things. So because they're independent events, probability of rolling something other than a 6 on die number 1 multiplied by the probability of rolling something other than a 6 on die number 2. Let's go ahead and write that out. So probability of something that's not a 6 on die 1 times probability that something that's not a 6 
on die 2, and so on. I need to include five terms, one for each of these five dice, so all the way down to something that's not a 6 on die number uh, 5, because I have five dice. So the full answer is going to be probably that I roll a 6 was 1 out of 6. The probably that I don't roll a 6 is going to be 5 out of 6. So I can either uh, say that I just know what that answer is, or if I wanted to, I could break it down by saying rolling a 6 and rolling not a 6 are complementary events. So on die number 1, there's a 5 chance in 6 that I didn't roll a 6. Die number 2, same thing. Die number 3, same thing. Die number 4 and die number 5, also same thing. So if I multiply all those together, I need a calculator uh, to do that, but that turns out to be thirty-one twenty-five over seventy-seven seventy-six. That, if we look back, that's the probability that I didn't roll any sixes whatsoever. I wasn't interested in that. What I'm interested in is the probability that I rolled at least one six. So one minus that number. So that's four thousand six hundred fifty-one out of seven thousand seven hundred seventy-six is the exact answer. If I want to think about that in terms of probability, I can round it off a little bit. That's pretty close to 0.6. So there's a roughly a 60% chance that I'm going to roll at least one uh, roll of a six when I roll five dice altogether. So that's an arbitrary example. Unless we're playing Yahtzee, maybe we don't care exactly what the odds are of rolling a six. But here's a good example of how I can, th number one, I can think of a problem two different ways, one of which might be easier than the other. Number two, it makes me use both the complementary events and the uh, independent events uh, rules in order to calculate the, the ultimate final answer. Or if I think about it the different way, I could have calculated it using mutual exclusive events. So no matter how complicated the problem is, we can break it down and get the final answer by using uh, instances of these basic probability rules.